Hey, I'm Ross Mayfield, investment strategy analyst at Baird, and we are back for another weekly video with our friends at Strategus. Today, I'm thrilled to be joined by Strategus chief economist Don Rissmiller to talk about a very strange economy. So, Don, uh, how are you doing today? Very good. Good to talk with you, Ross. Yeah, it's good to have you here. And as I alluded to, there are a lot of things going on in the economy right now, a lot of crosshairs. I wanted to start with the labor market. You have said you think the labor market is officially overheating. Um, I wondered if you could unpack that a bit, maybe what that means, why it's a problem, and what are the potential solutions down the road to that? Yeah, it's an important question. And so we, we certainly want to see job gains in the U.S. economy. It's obviously important. We like to see wage gains. We want to see wage gains in line with productivity. What, what the economics teaches us is real wages and productivity should move together over the long run. That's the pathway to sustainable gains in living standards and a sustainable gain in economic activity. And so right now we're getting data that's suggesting very tight labor markets. So if we look at payroll employment, uh, that's showing substantial gains. But if we go to the household survey and look at unemployment, we're well below 4%. And that's telling us that we're entering territory where we have to worry that we're getting bids into, say, the wage part of the equation that can yield a wage price spiral. And so wage gains are good, but at a point where they exceed productivity, we have to start thinking about whether you need to cool the economy off by pushing some growth into the future. Policy really moves growth around in time. There are times you want to pull growth forward if things are too weak, but there could be times you want to push growth off into the future. And, and we're starting to get to that point. And that's one of the reasons monetary policy, as an example, is looking to normalize, looking to tighten here to try to smooth out that trend. Yeah. And not just tighten like we talked about last year, but tighten really aggressively to combat this inflation. And so now you're hearing the Fed governors talk about hiking in 50 basis point increments. That's half a percent. That's something that they don't typically do, or at least not not recently. Um, a more aggressive, more front-loaded hiking cycle, in addition to balance sheet runoff. So I'm wondering if you could talk about some of the levers that the Fed can pull and how that might impact inflation uh, in the near term. I think there is a very strong case here for faster hikes. You're coming from a very low number. You're, you're starting from an emergency monetary policy. So right now what you're doing is you're going from emergency policy up to neutral. That's your first step. And so if we have decided the labor market is overheating, you wanna to get to neutral pretty quickly. You wanna take your foot off the gas if you're driving a car, if you're interested in, in slowing down and assessing the situation. Whether you have to push on the brake whether we have to take interest rates to a level that is dangerous for economic growth is a decision for the future. But right now, you're coming from essentially a zero rate policy and you're trying to get to something that looks more neutral, say two to 3%, and then assess the situation. So the idea of going faster here is partly coming from the fact that it's a situation where inflation matters for consumers, for small businesses, even the administration is saying that they recognize inflation is a problem and wouldn't mind Fed policy that tries to fight it here. If you look at the NFIB survey of small businesses, businesses are saying some of their main problems now are tied to inflation. If you look at consumer surveys like the New York Fed does, consumers are reporting elevated inflation expectations. If you look at the University of Michigan survey, which has questions on, is it a good time to buy a house? Consumers are saying it's not a good time because prices are too high. So across the board, there's a willingness to acknowledge that inflation is a problem. And it's the Fed's job to try to address that. The first step is to get your foot off the gas, get from zero interest rates to some sort of neutral policy. And there's a good case to do that quickly. You would augment that this time by uh, using quantitative tightening. So quantitative easing, QE, is a tool we've used over the past decade. It's now time to think about the other side, that there is a good case for quantitative tightening here, letting the balance sheet roll off. And the Fed minutes have communicated that that's also likely going to be part of the toolkit here as the Fed tries to get to a different position and an appropriate position. 
Right. And that kind of gets to that balance that they have to strike where they they need to cool down the economy to, to halt inflation a bit. But, you know, a step too far and the economy is in recession. So you've talked about this idea of a mid cycle slowdown before, which is basically the Fed striking that balance close to perfectly slowing the economy without tipping us into a recession. As it stands today, you know, how do you peg those odds? Is that still an outcome that's on the table or is it is it just too narrow a path to land? It is a tough task for the Fed to execute that correctly. But what is important right now is the Fed is not doing this alone. What we're saying is we want the private sector to also contribute to bringing inflation down. And that is basically by clearing bottlenecks. So that would be bottlenecks in product, bottlenecks in transportation, uh, like at the port, but also bottlenecks uh, in labor. And so as labor supply starts to show up, and there is some evidence that the labor force participation rate is starting to climb again, the private sector is going to help the Fed. So if the Fed decides they have to bring 8% inflation down to a 2% target, then that's really, really hard. And, and to do that without overdoing it and causing a recession is a really narrow path. But if the private sector brings inflation from 8% down to 3% and the Fed's job becomes 3 to 2 instead of 8 to 2, that's the pathway for the soft landing. So I'm viewing it as a joint effort. The Fed has to get into a different position, and that's a very visible uh, policy that has to be changed. But there's just as much on a day-to-day -day basis for the private sector when they manage bottlenecks, manage orders for semiconductors, manage uh, auto sales. All of these things are going to contribute uh, as well. And uh, as a, a joint effort, uh, I still see uh, a pathway to a, to a softer landing. So I'd say a 50% odds uh, of slower but not negative uh, economic growth, 35% odds of recession, 15% uh, that we have some upside. All right. Well, I appreciate you putting numbers to that. And, and Don, I want to thank you so much for the time today because this has been really helpful. And uh, we now have a couple of things to watch for until we chat next time. So thanks so much and uh, hope to talk soon. Thanks a lot.